Before I get into today's video, remember to follow me on Twitter. So my Twitter, the link is in the description below. You can also find me. My handle is at Jackson Kruger. Come over, say hi. And anyways, back to your regularly scheduled video. Let's talk about Andrew Thomas for a second. The fourth overall pick who I think did not live up to the hype in his first season, but really has lived up to the hype this past season. Took a big step forward as credit to me, I predicted after his first season. Uh, and here's why I think that, you know, here's what I always liked about him and why I think he's been able to pu really put it all together. So let's start off with a play like this, where you see where he is going to be going up one-on-one. -on -one, uh, you know, he's a left tackle. So ideally, you want your left tackle to be able to win one-on-ones pretty consistently. And that's what Thomas did last season. And a lot of what he was able to do is he kind of got his hands down, really. I feel like that was kind of the main thing he had to get down. He's such an athlete athlete but hands are how you win in the NFL and I think his hands were really good last year look at how right when this play begins really what's going to happen is the edge rusher is just going to try a sort of a, looks like he's trying just a bull rush to start things off but that's not going to work out too well Thomas is a hard guy to push around and you see how Thomas gets the hand placement he wants he gets his left arm over you know enough to the right side of the, def the defender's body that he's going up against of the Atlanta Falcons edge rusher he's going up against. So that way he's able to really be able to control this situation. The edge rusher sort of disengages and tries to get to the outside, but just not going to work because Thomas also has great athleticism. You're really not going to beat him with a speed rush, which means you have to kind of try things like this, try to beat him with your hands. But the issue with that is that it's hard to beat him with his hands. His hands are pretty good now. So, uh, and they were never, I, I didn't think they were ever horrible, but they're definitely have, they've come a long way since last season. And that's been the biggest reason why he's been able to be effective. You also have something like this where I always liked when I'm talking about a tackle, how well do you do against stunts, against twists, against just weird things, right? Where what's going to happen on this play, the simplest way to explain it would be just like the edge rusher and the defensive tackle are going to trade positions after the snap, where it's going to actually be the interior defensive lineman that Thomas is going to be ending up blocking on this play. So it's a little bit of a surprise. And for a second year player, this is how you can get fooled sometimes, right? When this play begins, he starts off expecting to block the edge rusher, but now at this point realizes that that's not what he's going to have to do. But I think he does a good job of, again, getting his hands up and getting his hands in position. The whole point of a play like this, really, you know, A, sometimes you can get somebody through completely untouched to the quarterback, but that's not going to happen here. But the other reason you do this is even if that doesn't happen, you can get guys just not have the hand placement they want because they have to kind of be a little bit late in getting the hand placement they want just due to the surprise factor of someone else is the guy to have to block than they expected pre-snap. However, watch how Thomas is able to just grab on and he's able to continue to make that block. So little things like that, being able to get your hands up quickly, all of that good stuff really does come into hand, come in handy, no pun intended, and that's what Thomas can do very effectively. You also have something like this where, listen, if you're a good athlete, these are the kind of things you want to use uh, them for, which is pull them, right? Uh, in this play, that's what's going to happen, where Thomas is the one who I've circled in black, the left tackle, obviously. Uh, he's going to be pulling over to the offense's right, so to the left side of our screen. Uh, and it looks like he's going to, you know, when you see this play and you see how it's set up, you would assume he's going to go in between the guard and the tackle on the right side, right? Because the linebacker who he's going to be blocking is currently lined up in between the guard and a tackle. So logically, it would make sense that that's the gap that you would run through, the B gap. However, right when this play begins, you notice that 45 for Atlanta goes to the A gap instead, one gap over. That's where he's running through. And for Thomas, I don't. I think he was a little bit surprised by this. I don't think he was fully expecting it. Kind of at the last second right now has turned over to try to get into that gap instead and try to make that tackle. Or excuse me, make the block, not allow the linebacker to make the tackle. That's what, uh, you know, Andrew Thomas is trying to do right here. And as you see, that's going to be exactly what Thomas does. He gets over, he makes that play. So good job by Thomas. It was a good defensive play, which, you know, didn't allow that run to go for much. You know, 45 did a good job of filling up the right gap. Credit to him. But I also think credit to Thomas for not allowing him to directly make the tackle. Again, it was still uh, not the best play from the Giants perspective, but it was more of a good defensive play, I would say. He still did his part. Thomas did. Uh, just, you know, sometimes 
it takes more than one good block to make a running play work. We also have something like this, where what's going to happen here is, again, it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one block. This is going to be in the running game as well. These are kind of, you know, these aren't the most difficult blocks in the world to make. These are blocks you expect your left tackle, especially a franchise left tackle, to be able to make, but he can make them. So it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one, uh, matchup. And really what Thomas is trying to do is just don't allow 92 to get anywhere closer to the middle. 92 is going to be in contain right here. His job is to make sure the halfback doesn't bounce things to the outside. So your job from if you're Thomas is just clear up a lane and kind of take him out of the play as your halfback probably isn't going to bounce things to the outside. Watch, right when this play begins, you see how kind of both guys are just doing what they should be doing right here. Ideally, if you're 92, you don't want to give up that much of a gap if the run was going to go in that direction, but that's not that's kind of a minor thing. At the end of the day, you want to just make sure that you don't allow things to get bounced to the outside, but for Thomas, he's doing a good job of pushing him far enough over to just give yourself more space over the middle to allow the rest of your blockers to do their job. Again, as you see, the run didn't go for two much listen Thomas a lot of times was the uh, you know guy in the school project that's doing all the work uh, in the group project well no one else does anything that was very much Andrew Thomas a lot of the times with that Giants offensive line uh, so you know that's part of the issue but at the same time I did think that you know this was a good play by Thomas finally one more play to talk about let's talk about this one where uh, one thing you might notice is that I made my graphic a lot uh, the lines are a lot thicker uh, I don't know why I did that I was just bored and made it thicker so uh, that, that's that's all that is anyways it's a one-on-one -on -one block listen it's the off season I got to do things to entertain myself I guess making uh, thicker graphs I guess is what I am uh, going with for this one uh, but watch what happens right when this play begins. Again, you're going to see kind of an attempt at a bull rush is really what this is going to be of just trying to use power to shove Thomas to the side. So that's what's happening here. You also see thinner lines again. So, uh, okay, guess I'm no longer bored. But look at how Thomas is like just barely going to get moved. Again, this is why the Giants drafted Thomas, you know, fourth overall. If you're a team that's not competitive and you're trying to be competitive later well why not draft the guy with the highest upside and maybe he won't have the best rookie season but you can sort of eventually figure you know have him figure it out and that's what they did and it's seemingly working out I mean listen like would he be better would you be better off with Tristan Wirfs or Andrew Thomas you can make an argument for both I would say Thomas plays the more prestigious position at left tackle obviously Wirfs won an all pro at right tackle but uh, you know, it's the nice thing for Giants fans is after year one, it felt like there were four great tackles and you drafted the worst of them with the fourth overall pick. Now it seems like even if you didn't draft the best, you drafted the second best and someone who you could argue is the best. So that's the nice thing. So yeah, that's kind of what I think about Andrew Thomas, a good player. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.